Hi class, today is a very interesting lecture and I welcome you all in today's lecture. Today we are going to study about architectural component which is a recent addition to Android development but very effective that you will see in today's lecture. Okay, first I will list down the topics that we are going to cover today. So topics will be the motivation for architectural component, life cycle aware component, life cycle, life cycle owner and life cycle observer and then we will study about view model and live data. Okay. So these are the topics. So are you all excited? Because I am. Now I'll start with uh, discussion with the major challenges and problems that we face in developing android without them okay so there are two major challenges which i am going to discuss okay so these two major challenges include first is that uh, i want you to involve into this actually you have your activity your fragment okay your application your services okay so we know that we do not create these classes okay so they are glue classes actually that are managed by our os or android framework okay so android framework has this responsibility of managing the life cycle of these classes and they provide a medium to communicate with us with our application through lifecycle callbacks okay these lifecycle callbacks uh, majorly in most of the components are on create okay then on start on resume on pause then on stop and on destroy okay so these are the major callbacks that os uses to communicate with our application okay and we use these callbacks to do certain things for example we use them to clean up process okay for example we have registered to some services we want to deregister them when on destroy for example is called or on stop is called okay we use them to register and unregister listeners okay okay for example we have uh, we are we have registered to a local broadcast receiver so we want to register at on start and unregistered at on stop okay so this result into for example bloated codes okay because suppose we have a number of services and we are using our activity fragment and application for example a service so if you are trying to manage their state in these classes so this classes become very difficult to manage and get bloated codes okay so what are the major problems that arise with these problems okay problems include things like memory leak okay for example if we have we do not unregistered at on stop we'll get memory leak or on destroy okay this can lead to crashes okay and other things that may include is again your bloated code is one of the problem so you can see there are major problems associated with the original construct that we have okay we can manage them by good coding practices but it is not safe on its own okay so uh, this was one of the problem another problem is that uh, that has actually been a very difficult to solve earlier was screen rotation okay so now i'm going to discuss about screen rotation and you will understand the reason why i'm saying that so 
suppose uh, you have got this activity okay activity a for example okay now this activity fetch a list of users from a remote server okay and this list of users when it gets it stores inside itself it stores inside itself now suppose this activity user rotates this activity so you will get the new instance of the activity a it will be a different instance than this okay so think about it do we have this list of user available in the new instance okay so it will not be available actually in the new instance so you do not have the list of users that you had earlier with this new instance after rotation so you will again fetch this from the server and save it now think about the waste of resources list of user has not changed but you have to fetch it again okay so there is a waste of resource second thing user has to now wait till you are fetching the resource so user has to unnecessarily hindered okay so this is the second problem now in order to solve second problem we can have multiple approaches so you may suggest things like using static references second you can suggest things like using save instance state okay you can think of using shared preferences you can think of db you can think of lru catch okay. so if you store in the static let's see uh, that what problems will come when we are using any or one of them we are using static then we must free that we should set that as null in on destroy so this is potential to memory leak now on save instance state is designed to store a very small amount of view data okay that can be serializable and deserializable the so list of user is a very large amount of data you cannot use save instance state now okay now if you share preferences or db you'll have to manage the syncing with the server because you don't know that if this list of user has changed or not so you'll have to create a syncing mechanism so this is not also a very good option lru catch you can use okay but then you'll have to manage the catch okay and there you'll have to write a lot of additional code to manage the list of user from the server and from the catch so this is also not very viable so none of the solution are very viable so architectural component actually comes up with a better design to solve this problem that we will see later okay now coming back to the first problem where we wanted to free the activity or fragment from life cycle handling of other components okay so basically what we desire is what we actually desire is suppose you have this activity okay and there is one component this activity works with this component and this component has to be provided with life cycle events for example this is a location listener and you don't want to listen the location when app is in the background so you need to provide this information to the component so we want to free this activity decouple both of them and we want to make this independent so that this can also access life cycle callbacks of this activity activity don't have to tell it it can ask for activities life cycle by itself so this will be a better design this will decouple your code and make this code independent okay so suppose you are just shipping some library if everything you can manage inside this component that this component knows 
that what wherever it is going, going to get used it is aware of the life cycle then it will be very simple for a client to actually use your library so they are very advantage of this architecture so architectural component actually has provided this architectural architecture only so in the new architecture we have your activity your fragment okay service so another construct has been added which is called life cycle life cycle is a class and after support library 2610 all the classes of activity fragment and they actually have implemented for us that they have created one instance of life cycle which reside in them okay so life cycle is an introduction a new introduction that helps to achieve that so your activity and fragment has now life cycle instance okay this is a class the classes which has a life cycle are called life cycle owner okay so suppose this activity and fragment if you will go and see their code you will find it has implemented an interface life cycle owner this interface tells that they have life cycle okay and inside their instances if a class that you will see there is an instance of life cycle class so there is a life cycle we can say that we have extracted the life cycle out of these and has provided into a different class okay we can assume like that so now we have got life cycle and activity in fragment has that life cycle instance this life cycle class has two properties one is state and another is event okay there are two enums so now we'll see that how they work so how life cycle works we are going to see now so we have got certain states enums okay the first one is initialized okay and parallel to this is destroyed okay and in between there are various other states like created okay then started and resumed okay so these are the states which is defined in the life cycle class transition between the state triggers an event so when the state change from initialized to created an event is create generated and that event is on create here okay when created to started state change an event is thrown that is on start and after started to resumed we have on resume okay from resume to started we have on pause i think you can guess the next one from started to created think about it yes on stop and this one also you can guess created to started state will be on destroy so transition between state event is thrown and this life cycle is designed to do all these things okay now this life cycle has state and event so what is the benefit of it okay so benefit of it is that any other component can observe them okay what do i mean by that that we have another class which is provided in the architectural component one becomes your interface life cycle owner one class life cycle and another one is life cycle observer this is an interface any component 
that you have designed want to know that suppose this activity that I have for example one component who wants to know that what is the current state this activity is in is is this activity is in the started state or destroyed state or resumed state we can know that if there is a change in this activity for example on start is called we will get the event on start so we can we can ask for that also okay so life cycle observer we can say that they can observe the events they can listen to the event okay and it can also query the state life cycle observer can know the state of this life cycle that is of this activity or fragment and it can also listen to the event which is triggered okay so now we can create one component which can get the life cycle owner from that it can get the life cycle and from that it can do all these things it becomes independent from this activity we'll see that in the code example so now we'll move into the code example and see that how we can use them in our code okay that will give you a better understanding now uh, i'll give you a brief what we are going to do in the code so basically in the code we have it's a very simple code you have got main activity okay and we are going to create one class which is timer toast okay. this timer toast has countdown timer and it counts till one minute and triggers at every three seconds each three seconds we'll get a call back from the timer and at each three seconds we are going to show a toast on the screen so our aim is that to handle two things okay three things actually we want that when the activity is visible then only we should show the toast then we want that when the activity goes in the background it should not show the toast or when back press it is destroyed then also we don't want to show the toast okay so we'll see in the example that how we can achieve this first we'll see the without using architectural component and what problems we can arrive with that and then we will use the architectural component so i'll see you in the code example so welcome to the code part of this we will first try to understand the role of our life cycle in our android development okay so now you can see here i will, i have got main activity only one activity is there i'll create one class a kotlin class and call it timer toast okay role of this timer toast will be to show a toast at each three second okay so here inside i'll create a countdown timer okay i'll call this timer and this will be a instance of countdown timer okay I will have to implement two methods here on finish and on tick and this take two parameters one defines the duration through which this timer will be running so I am providing 60 seconds in milliseconds okay and I have to provide the interval at which this timer will tick okay so for 60 seconds this timer will run and each three second we will get a callback on take with the time until finished okay so what we want to do is at each tick we want to show a toast okay it need context so let's pass it from outside but out want to get application so that i am safe that 
no other context than application context is provided okay and I will have to print a message which here I want to print this value and duration and then show okay and on finish I want to print show the toast with finish now I want to also supply two APIs for external classes who are using timer toast to start our countdown timer and also to stop our countdown timer so I'll start function start I'll write this function name and it will just simply start our timer again I will write a function I'll call it stop and this will cancel our timer okay so this is a simple class you can see one thing to mention is that on finish and on tick will be called on a different thread okay than the main thread okay so now in our main activity uh, we'll try to use this timer toast so let's create a variable for it let in it where timer toast okay and on create let's try to create an instance of it okay pass the application and then start the timer and when we run this let's see what happens now we can see that we are getting our toast now if I press the home button app goes into the background and still I am getting the toast okay this is one of the issue okay now if I bring my application back and press the back button then also I am getting the toast so we need to fix these two issues to fix these two issues we need first issue will not be solved directly okay second issue will try to use that we'll use on destroy callback and here we will stop our timer so when we press the back button the timer will not show the toast okay this will be fixed but to fix the first one that only when the app is in the foreground we should show the timer we'll have to manage it in more complex way in the activity that is we will have to use the on start and on stop callback and we need to pass that callback also to the timer toast okay so this will complicate the code and also this will bloat your code in the main activity so this is a major issue of bloating code in the activity or life cycle classes okay so if we just put this here and try to run our application again let's see what happens So we are getting our toast we press the home we have still getting our toast but when we press the back button we don't get the toast so our second problem is solved first problem we will solve by the life cycle methods okay so now we will convert our timer toast into life cycle aware component okay and we'll see that how this helps in managing the code separate from the main activity okay so now we are going to make this class timer toast into life cycle aware so are you all excited how we can do that okay so let's do it so first thing we to make this timer toast as life cycle aware we need to supply the life cycle owner to it okay so we'll first get the life cycle owner to this class now in order to make this timer toast observe the events okay of the life cycle which is inside the life cycle owner will have to make it life cycle observer okay so what we will do we'll make it implement the life cycle observer okay so timer toast now takes life cycle owner and implements the life cycle observer that is it can observe the life cycle okay 
and why it has taken life cycle owner so that it can function according to the life cycle of the owner okay and second thing that we would want is when this life cycle owner get the event that it has been started we will start our timer also so in order to attach the listener to the life cycle we will have to use the on life cycle event annotation okay and here we need to supply which event we want to bind our function with so it will be life cycle dot event dot on start so when this owner life cycle will get the callback for the on start our function will also be called okay so this is the way to attach the function with the life cycle events similarly on stop we want to be called when the event of on destroy is triggered okay but on start will be called many times app whenever comes from background to foreground will get the callback on start so we just want to start the timer once okay so what i will do i'll keep a flag here okay call it started and boolean false so i'll just put a check if not started then only start our timer okay and also i would want that i'll set this to true okay so that this code is only executed once because we will get multiple times this callback okay now when the function will be visible to the user our timer will get started okay and when it is destroyed our timer will get cancelled we also want one thing that on tick should only show the toast when the app is in the foreground so we'll use this life cycle passed what i will do is first i will not want to hold the reference of this life cycle owner inside this class okay because that will hold the reference of the activity or the fragment so i will just hold the reference of life cycle and i'll get the life cycle of this owner okay now using this life cycle i can query its current state and there is a utility function at least started so i want if at least it has been in the started state then only i should show a toast that is it is either in the started or resumed state then only show the toast so this utility function is there in the life cycle current state otherwise i will have to put two checks started or resumed okay state dot started so if it is at least started then only i'll show the toast similarly in the on finish also okay so now we are showing the toast according to the state of the life cycle of the life cycle owner passed and also we are getting a callback on the event of the life cycle but this callback will only be called when we attach our observer to the life cycle okay so i'll use the init block and the life cycle okay i'll add observer and pass this okay so one thing to mention that i have not written val here and val here okay still i am able to access these variables in our timer and also life cycle owner okay this is because the init block and variable instantiation at the class level can access the variables which has been passed in the constructor but if we try to access them in the for example start i won't be able to access the life cycle owner okay i have no access to make it accessible after the instantiation of variable and init block i need to put val okay 
so then i can access the life cycle owner but i don't want this class to keep a reference of life cycle owner after it has been extracted from the life cycle okay now if now we'll have to use this in our main activity in our main activity we'll have to put some changes so i'll have to pass this okay each activity and fragment now in support library has life cycle owner implemented okay so we are passing this of the activity i don't have to call start it will be managed automatically i don't need to call on destroy handle on destroy it will be called automatically so now we can see that this code is completely decoupled and timer toast is still able to function according to the life cycle of the activity okay this simplifies this code in the activity and also make timer toast reusable okay very easily in any component which is life cycle aware now we'll try to run this and see what happens so we are getting a toast press the home button there is no toast start again from the background it came into foreground again the toast press the back button there is no toast so now our component is able to function properly with the life cycle event and state of the activity so this is the powerful thing the architectural component has provided with okay so i hope this will help you understand how to how actually life cycle is functioning and how can we create our own observer with the life cycle okay so now you must have understood how to use life cycle life cycle observer and you must have understood how beneficial it is to use in our application now we will study about view model and live data okay they are very important for our project as well and this is a very important concept to understand okay so view model this view model is different than the view model class that we created in the dagger okay so this view model is provided by the android framework in the support library okay so you will have to import for using the grad there is a gradle import so that you have to import that in your gradle and then only you can use live data and view model that we'll see in the code example so what is a view model okay so we can define our application into actually working of our application into two components for ui related things so you have ui controller ui controller will be activity or fragment okay and then you have this view model okay so view model actually now stores the data and the ui controller will ask the view model about the data and it can and the ui controller will tell about the events that happen inside it so role of a view model is from the architectural perspective also that it is trying to decouple data handling and logic out of the ui controllers okay now this view model provided by the android is of two types basically the major two types okay one is simple view model class which is provided by the android second is your android view model okay so why we would want to use the view model okay first question so this view model is managed by first advantage is that these are managed by the os so it will work respect the life cycle of the classes that is 
it is destroyed by the it is this is removed by the system itself we don't remove them and we don't create them okay we ask for their instance so they survive the rotation the second problem that we had survive the rotation configuration change it will survive okay now we'll see the advantages of both of them and to understand that how this happens so first thing is creation how do we create this view model okay so we have got view model providers okay view model providers is in the framework now in the support library in the lifecycle package so they are responsible for creating the instance so we ask them to create the instance okay so they are created by other class now let me give you the example that how configuration change is handled by the view model okay now suppose in the earlier example that your activity was there okay and it rotate and new instance of the activity is created okay it has got the list of users now the list of user exist in view model okay this list of user now exist in the view of model not in the activity okay so what happens let's see that how after rotation also it receives the same view model okay so this activity first instance has a view model instance when it rotated a new instance is created and it receives the same instance of view model okay so this view model persisted between the creation of new instance and when it again attached to the view, uh, view model it will have the list of user present so no need of making the new api call okay so now there are certain questions you can ask that when suppose and one activity is rotated and new instance is created so if view model is not destroyed then that can potentially lead to memory leaks okay that you can think of this design can lead to a memory leak condition okay so when it is destroyed you should think okay so to answer this we will see the life cycle callbacks that went from creation of rot activity and rotation and then creation so that you will get to understand that how view model actually survived so when this activity is first created we'll get the callback on create okay then on start on resume okay now after this the activity rotates here activity rotates okay when activity rotate it is going to get removed okay so it will that activity get will get the callback on pause on stop and then on destroy okay now the activities new activity is recreated here new instance of that activity is created so that activity new activity will get the callback on on create then on start on resume okay and here it is finished by the system okay how can it get finished either we explicitly call finish of the activity or system reclaims that memory for example activity a is in 
the task stack and activity b comes on top of it activity b requires more memory activity a will be removed so finished by the system os okay it can be finished by the os so this is the condition which is differentiating with finished versus destroy okay when at this state finished is called it is going to get finished by system or by us it will call on pause okay then on stop then on destroy okay and after this it goes into the finished state okay so from here to here till destroy your view model will survive view model instance will reside till the activity is not finished okay so activity finished actually later in rotation activity on destroy was called but it was not finished in place of getting finished it was recreated so uh, when it get finished then only view model is cleared okay on cleared of the view model is called that is view model is now disassociated with the activity and can be garbage collected so the difference between finished and on destroy you must understand okay finished is the condition when the activity is no longer required and then only your view model will be removed okay when it recreates after rotation on destroy is called but not finished so this is how view model persist during the screen rotation and if, since it persists everything you store in the view model will be removed okay so it will not lead to memory leak because when activity is actually finished it will get cleared okay so view model work with both your activity and fragment okay so when the activity is finished view model is removed and in the fragment when on detach is called then this view model is removed okay now there is one more condition that you must understand that this view model can outlive the instance of the activity okay so you must never store any ui related thing any ui reference should not be there in the view model otherwise that would lead to memory leak we'll study about memory leak further in the to the boot camp also okay so now you understand how view model helps in screen rotation and the role of view model okay now i told you view model has one more variant android view model okay which we are not going to use in our application basically android view model gets in the constructor by the system application instance okay and the view model normal view model don't get the application instance in the constructor so this can be useful if suppose you want to access resource of the system but we will not use that we will create a system such that everything is passed to the outside you will see in the further into the boot camp okay now this was about the view model we will understand about this in the code example later in this lecture now let's discuss about the live data live data is very interesting because what we did to create a life cycle aware component in our code example same thing is already done in the live data okay that's why it's very powerful so live data stores data in its side and it allows its data to be observed it allows the data it store inside to be observed okay same that we had we saw in the life cycle also okay so this construction allows the data to be observed when there is a change in the data okay we usually define the instance of the live data inside a view model okay normally we do that okay but it is not restricted okay so normally in our 
bootcamp we will use live data inside the view model only now live data takes two things in the when you create the instance of the live data okay when you try to observe the live data actually then it will take two things so there is an observer so there is an observer class okay this is also defined in the life cycle package okay so there is live data and this observer so how to associate live data with the observer we'll see so live data instance you can create in the view model and wherever now john generally in the activity of fragment we asso associate an observer to the live data so live data takes two things one is life cycle owner and second is observer when we call dot observe for this live data okay so this life cycle owner is used by live data to understand that when i send the data to the life cycle owner would it be able to process it that is for example the data is changed and observer will not be send the data until the life cycle owner is at least started state okay when this can this is visible to the user that is when your activity of fragment is at least started that we saw in our core example also then only any data change is sent to the observer okay so this is how it safeguards the memory leak for example if we use async task the major problem was that when the activity for example goes into the background then also async task can return the result here live data will not return the result when the activity will again come back into the foreground then it will deliver that data so it data live data stores the data and it sends the data to the observer when your life cycle owner can process that okay now in order to uh, show the functioning of this live data we can do it this way suppose this is our live data okay this live data we have placed inside our view model okay this live data we have placed inside our view model so there is for example one fragment and there is another fragment this is fragment 1 this is fragment 2 this fragment has inside got a live an observer okay then there is an instance of observer inside this observer inside this okay now this live data is associated with observer and the life cycle owner fragment okay and this live data is also associated with the observer and respect the life cycle of the fragment okay and inside the live data it stores a data for example list of users suppose list of user view model fetch the sir api from the api list of user it will update the data in the live data when update take place this observer will be send this data and this observer will also be send data so a live data can have multiple observers in multiple fragment as well okay so both of them will be will receive that data now suppose this fragment goes into the back stack okay it is not visible okay then if suppose again the list is updated then this fragment will not be send this data this observer will not receive the data only this observer will receive the data because it is visible this is at least started now this when this fragment comes back it will then receive the new data okay so this is how the live data works now again live data has got two variant okay so live data has two variant 
live data and mutable live data okay so basically live data only allows to be observed we cannot update the data directly no data update directly okay mutable live data has got two methods set value and post value okay there are two methods which are available set value when you call then you can update this data only in the mutable live data not in the live data post value you can call set value must be called through the main thread and post value can be called by any thread okay so these are two types of live data and how we can use them to update the data that you can see here and one more thing uh, for example this fragment and this fragment you should attach the observer to the live data in the on create method only okay on create only you do that even if it receives the data before on start it will not send okay live data will handle that for you okay and we want that we should only attach an observer once to that live data so do that in on create only okay now uh, suppose there is a condition that you want to use this live data with some component which does not have the life cycle then also there is a construct provided in the live data okay that is observe forever in any live data you have one method this is a live data instance some live data instance and it has got observe forever okay in the observe forever you will pass the instance of the observer so this does not take life cycle owner it means that any change is there it will be updated it won't respect the life cycle okay suppose you have some requirement where you want to use live data in some component which does not have the life cycle then you can use observe forever but here you have to manually deregister it remove observer okay and you have to pass the same instance here okay so this is one more helpful thing provided by the live data now there is one thing that i want to discuss is how live data helps actually or how view model helps in cross fragment communication okay suppose you have this activity okay and you have got two fragments fragment 1 and fragment 2 okay suppose this is a list of user or list of articles this is the article detail okay now when you select the article you want the article detail to show that information so you want this fragment to communicate with this okay you can achieve this by using this activity as a mediator this fragment will tell the activity that this item has been selected this will then update this fragment to change the article this will act as a mediator but then you'll have to write multiple bloated code here and this fragment and this fragment will get tied up with the application with the activity so view model provide one solution to that both of them both this fragment can get the instance of the view model that activity has okay when you get try to get the view model you call the view model provider okay providers and you pass here the instance of either activity or fragment so suppose fragment f1 and f2 both will have the same activity when you supply the activity here you will get the same instance of this view model so all three will have the same instance of the view model and they can communicate with each other okay so now i will see you in the code example where we will understand how to use the live data and view model 
we will try to solve the same problem that we solved using the life cycle observer and we will understand how life data solves that automatically for us so now we will understand about the view model and live data so live data is life cycle aware just like our timer toast so now we will use the view model and live data to see how we work with them so main activity requires one class or one view model okay so we'll call it main view model so first we will create our main view model okay so this main view model is different than what we created earlier we need to extend the view model that is provided by the android okay call the primary constructor here we have created our view model and this view model will have a live data okay that will provide the that will do the same thing that timer toast was doing but that live data will provide that data to the activity so that it can show the toast okay so we'll create a live data call timer data okay and this will be a mutable live data which will which will provide string okay now we'll create again our timer but inside this main view model that is we will use this timer inside the view model okay countdown timer inside the view model now we don't require these things okay so we have we have created countdown timer which does the same thing which ticks after three seconds and on finished called after one minute we will also provide a function from outside that it can be started function start okay which we'll call timer dot start okay now we will override this view model one method on cleared okay this is called when the system is going to destroy our view model so this will be automatically called by the system when this happens we will call cancel of our timer okay now whenever there is a tick we would send this data through the live data to someone who is observing this live data so each tick we will post the value in the live data okay it should be a string so let's use a string okay and when it is finished in the live data we'll post a value call it finish okay so now in this class we have created we have extended the view model okay android view model and we have created a live data okay which will supply string which holds a string we have created our timer countdown timer same, same as before and on each tick we are updating the value which is hold by the mutable live data okay and we have provided two apis to be called from outside on start and on cleared we have overridden actually so that we can cancel it okay so now let's delete this timer toast we don't require it okay so now in the main activity we will create the view model instance okay so main view model instance we do not create by ourselves but ask the system to create it okay so how to create this we have got view model provider okay so if you want your project to get support for live data and view model you must include you must 
add these in your build dot gradle okay so that when you add this dependency then only you get the view model and live data otherwise you will not get okay now so we have got view model providers okay dot off this activity dot get we want the instance of main view model class okay so we do not create the instance we ask the view model provider who manages the instance of the view model to create and provide us okay now after this we need to associate an observer to the live data okay timer data is the live data in the view model we want that any change if there is in the live data we should observe that change so we need to add the observer observe observe takes life cycle owner same as we had created our timer toast this also works similarly so internally it works similarly so it takes the life cycle owner and an observer okay we have created an instance of an observer so this observer on change is called so this this is actually lambda that you must have read now so this on change of the observer will be called this lambda will be triggered when there is a change in the timer data when we post value to the timer data we will we'll get a callback here okay so when this happens so we will show a toast okay the message that has been passed is it okay and short not show okay so now you can see that we have created our view model we have not handled any life cycle event here okay we want the same thing that was happening in our earlier solution that this toast must be shown whenever the app is in the foreground then only it should be shown as a toast okay and the timer should stop when the activity is stopped okay is killed okay so the main view model has live data and it is just updating the values okay so this will be sent this data will be sent to the observer we set in the main activity in the life cycle conscious way that is when this main activity is at least started then only you will get a call to the observer with the new data okay Yes, one more thing we need to do. We need to call the start of the timer. Okay. Then only our timer will start. Now let's run. So we are getting our toast. When we press the home, we are not getting the toast now. Now again we are getting the toast. When I press back, there is no toast. Okay. So now we were able to achieve the same functionality which we were able to build using lifecycle aware class that we developed through the live data also. So live data helps in transferring the data to the observer in the lifecycle conscious way. And view model helps to persist the data and it is automatically cleared when the activity associated life cycle activity of fragment is is also destroyed or detached for the fragment okay so i hope you must have understood how to use view model and live data and how they help in creating things that are life cycle aware so i hope you must have enjoyed today's lecture and now you have to do is you have to practice the code sample that has been done in the video tutorial and these things will come into play in developing our instagram project okay so i'll see you in the next lecture take care